Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is our second episode of our playthrough of Hollow Knight. Today we are going to be finishing Green Path and beating our second boss fight, Horn. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share it with someone you think might like it, ding the little notification bell so you never miss an upload. Let's do this. So you might have noticed the um, last episode, like the audio, the game audio started cutting out. And I don't know why that is, but I hope I fixed it. The game audio might be quiet, but that's because like on OBS it wouldn't let me hear my voice if the game audio was too loud. So, but at least you can still hear it. So, we are going to log on to our world here. So, it starts us off at Ancestral Mound. I don't remember last episode and you're just starting here, that's fine. I'm gonna give you a recap. Last episode, we defeated our first boss fight, got our first fighting ability, defeated a couple mini bosses, and I kind of made a level one tutorial for this game. So now we are going down and we're going into a new area of Hollow Nest, Green Path. This is where we are going to be defeating our second boss fight and a lot of other new enemies. I think in like every single episode, I'm just going to leave the link to download this game into the description. I love this game. I suggest you download it. It is $15 on Steam and pretty much anywhere else. So. It's, not, it's not cheap, but... So I'm going to go up to here, where these leaves are. So, last episode, we got an ability called Vengeful Spirit. Basically, when you get enough soul, it blasts a giant, like, spirit bullet, I guess you could call it, at the enemy. And you you need that certain ability to defeat that guy right there that's in front of me. Because when you get close to him, he curls up in his shell. And you can't hit him like that. So you need to be able to hit him from a distance. So as you can see, if I... So if I... Wait, so... Oh my goodness. So if I get close to him, he's gonna curl up. And I can't hit him like that. But you can't, you see I can't, I can't do any damage to him, but I'm gonna get away. Now I can. It's a cool little ability we got. And th this is my first opportunity to show you guys that Fear of the Fallen charm we equipped in the first episode. When you get down to one life, your screen turns red, and you get like a hundred times stronger. But I'm going to heal because I have just enough soul. Now we've made it into Green Path. Oh, dang. That was... Alright, so... There's like a bench up here somewhere. And here we are. There are these guys. They're really weird. And then when you kill them, they like explode. And you don't want to touch that gas that they release. Even when you don't kill them, they still like explode in front of you and they don't die. So. I don't want to touch that. Especially, I don't want to touch that because I'm down to one life right now. There is a bench up here. So, there we go. Benches also allow you to clip, equip charms like these in Fear of the Fallen. And they also restore all your lives. So, we got a new charm last episode called Soul Catcher. And so every time you hit an enemy you gain soul this one increases the amount of soul you get when you hit an enemy so basically there's this thing you can do where you can keep equipping a charm and now you're over charmed so yeah basically it gives you less life i guess i don't know what the over charm does I forget exactly what it does. Either it makes you weaker, or I don't know. But, uh, yeah. If you look in the top left, you can see my lives are like embodied by a purple glow now. So 
There's, that's Hornet. That's what she looks like. We are going to be defeating her in this episode. Just have to kind of keep chasing her. So you can go down here. There is like a way to get up to that room that she just went in without um, the ability, without this certain ability. But it's quite hard, so I won't do that. Oh, wait, no, where did she go? All you need to know about this area is if you see vine, cut vine. Like, even if it, so, like, see, look, buddy. Bye. And he doesn't explode, so it's useful. And if you walk over to the right here, these things are like little mosquitoes. Hey. You could have come back on them. Smushed him. So now if you walk over all the way to the right here, you find Cornifer again. We found him in the last episode in the first area and he gave us his map. So yeah. We talked to him. So you can purchase a map. Alright. Now if I hold left bumper here, I have yeah, I have this map of the area here. It shows me the map of the area and where it leads into the Forgotten Crossroads. And then if you go into your inventory, you go to the map, and it shows you all of the places you got mapped. It's cool. And then now, to continue on with the progress, so I don't know. Yeah, now things do two, two amounts of either, things do two amounts of damage or I do but, So, I think when you're overcharmed, normal things do two hearts of damage. I don't know, but see, when I hit them, I get more soul. I kind of want to test that. Okay, so if you walk all the way over to the right here, there's another little room. You don't have to go here, but I, it's quite useful what you get from here. So you can walk over here. As you can see, there are all these fangs in the ground. It's kind of creepy. You see the cave? And this six-eyed beast kind of just roars at you. He tells you about being a hunter and... Yeah. So he gives you his journal. So, yeah, he says, prove yourself worthy to bear the mark of the hunter. If you take his journal and you basically beat, like, one of every mob in the game and every boss, you can come back to him later, and he'll basically give you this thing called the hunter's mark, and it gives you, like, a lot of progress in the game, And it, but it's really hard to do, so. Oh. What was that? That was weird noise. Okay, so now you have to go over here. There's Hornet again. So now that you got the hunter's I was gonna say, now that you have the hunter's journal, you come up here and you can like defeat these little guys. And, or that guy you've already defeated before, so it doesn't really count. So if you have the Hunter's Journal and you defeat one of these oblobble things, then at the bottom left, at the, yeah, the bottom left of my screen, it'll say new journal entry. Every, every time you defeat a new mob, then it'll say that at the bottom of your screen. And it'll basically give you a new journal entry. So if you come over here, you can get another new journal entry here. Let me just get these guys out. So if you come over here, yeah, so when you're over charmed, they do two hearts of damage, and, like anything. Else. So you can come over here, and you can basically lure that guy. OK. 
Okay, and then you get this geo here, and when you kill that guy that comes out of the ground there, you get another journal entry. So, go here. And this is where you find something that kind of jump scared me the first time I did this. But you just kind of gotta defeat him and then move on. He will come out of the ground if you don't defeat that thing that comes out of him. But he'll just kind of, he'll stay there. So this thing comes out again. Then... Or... We have to chase her kind of up here. And then you can go up here if you want. Actually, you do have to go up here. So. Then we can push up the edge. So if we come up here, you have to pay Geo. You can pay Geo, and you can get this bench here. And you need to pay Geo to move on. So. Geo, bench, destroys all your lives. Now I am going to un -over charm myself because that kind of like, that makes me so that I lose two lives every time something hits me. And we're about, we're very, we're quite close to the boss fight here, so I don't want for it to be like absolutely destroying me, so. Need more soul because uh, up here you just kind of go to the right. And there's this mini boss fight, so he's kind of hard to. So, if you have the, well, you can't move on to this area without it. So, since you have that, um, since you have that new ability, that vengeful spirit, it's a lot easier to defeat that guy. But you don't have to have the vengeful spirit to defeat him. You do have to have the vengeful spirit to get to him, though. That was not the boss fight, so that's just a little mini boss fight. There's this optional thing up here. If you want to get complete like 120% on the game, you do have to do this. Where you go over here, you, can, you have to get, I suggest you get as much soul as you can before you do this, if you're going to. So if you go over here, you hear this guy. Yeah, that, that noise. So you come up here and you see this guy named Zoe getting chewed up by him. So you can... And he's like very arrogant, so even when you like even when you save him, he claims he's the one that like killed this thing, so Oh dang it. Oh, I'll close my shade. Alright, gotta do this now. So come back up here. This is that. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh. So we're going to. You have to defeat this guy again, which is kind of sad. It's easy now. Now that you know all of his moves. Oh. 
and you get more geo. So like when you kill your shade, you get all of your geo back. Like when you die, you lose all your geo and like, um, yeah, and like um, some of your progress. When you kill your shade, you get your geo and your progress back. So getting more geo is kind of useful. I thought. So I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna shoot up to defeat your shade. It's your shade. Alright. Oh, dang it. Oh my goodness, this is not fair. Oh, I'm bad. I don't like this. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Oh! I thought he was gonna call. Don't you do it. Don't have any more. Oh, dang it. Okay, 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 okay. Let's go. That Fury of the Fallen is really useful in boss fights like these. That was like a real boss fight. So if you want to get like 100% on the game, or 120% on the game, you have to defeat him. See, he's like really arrogant. I'm the one that saved you. Life Ender, ha, country name. Okay, so this is like a real boss fight. If you wanna get 120%, there's one more Vengefly King you can defeat. And at the end of the game, you can get this thing called the Dream Nail. At the end of the game, you can dream nail this um, this NPC, and you get into this free mod called Godmaster, and you you have to def in order to get there, you have to defeat every single boss and mini boss in the game. So, is it hard to get there? Yes. Is it worth it? Yes. Okay, so we're getting quite, yeah. So when you go through that door, that's where the boss fight is. First, we're gonna come down here and just get a quick bench. Let's see, come down here, and we found our first stag station in the last video. This is another stag station. So you can come over here, insert Geo. Follow oh, Geo. Insert Geo, the gate will open, a bell will come up. If you ring it, you can travel between, uh, you can travel between Green Pass, Forgotten Crossroads, and Dirtmouth now. So um, it's also useful because you get a bench. Benches save your checkpoints, so yeah. If this is your first time doing this boss fight, I remember my first time doing the boss fight, it's really hard. If you know her moves and you know her pattern, after you'll get it after a couple times. You'll get her moves and her pattern after a couple times, and then eventually it's gonna be really easy. So. Go over here. She talks to you. She gives you a lot of lore, actually. If you watch Matt Pat's video, I'm gonna leave his link in the description again. Um, he tells you. I think he tells you about like how Hollow Knight is actually Hornet's father. That might have been Mossback. I don't know, but yeah. Yeah, I know what you are, I know what you try to do, I can't hold up, so. Shoot. 
She is like literally, if you're ha if you're uh, like across the arena from you, she will jump and she will fly at you. She is literally like a, oh, like a bird. Oh, why am I doing that? Okay, yep. Oh my goodness, we're gonna stop. Yeah. That was too close for comfort. I love the music for this game. That's probably like my favorite part. Knock her out a couple times. She never really dies. She kind of just like gives up. So there are like three phases that you have to do. Oh. I think you have to defeat her. I have to defeat her like one more time. Oh, jeez. Do not get close quarters with her. Like otherwise she will kill you. So you defeat her at the very end there. She doesn't die, she kind of just like runs away. And then you can get this guy. You can get your first, you can get your second ability. Actually, now. This one does not require soul. It's just a dash ability that you can use. So pick up his cloak, and now I can dash. You get this little bit of cutscene lore a little bit. So, so he, they talk about the seals and how they can't be undone. The seals are basically the three dreamers that sealed away this thing called the Hollow Knight, which kept this, uh, which kept the infection inside of it, so that it didn't reach all of the bugs in Hollow Nest. But at the beginning of the game, you see the cutscene that sit, they, and you see the infection being released into Hollow Nest. So they talk about how the seals cannot be undone; they must be undone. Those three things are called dreamers. Those three things are called dreamers, and there are three of them, and, and okay. Now you can go away, they don't really hurt you. So as you can see, you got Moth and Cloak, and it's quite kind of useful. So you can just, oh! I fell back. Let's see if we get some gear over here. Yeah, a lot of that geo just fell into the... Okay, so, yeah, we defeated that us. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share it with someone you think might like it. Peace.